Okay. So I've been asked to talk about uh, not what's going on in the peripheral blood, but the, the T and B cell interactions that occur in the germinal centers that drive antibody responses uh, to all pathogens, including HIV. I have no financial interest to disclose, much to the consternation of my wife. Um, so the germinal center is where uh, T and B cells interact uh, to lead to the development of broadly neutralizing antibodies. The lymph node is actually not just a bag of lymphocytes. It's actually a complex structure uh, shown here. Uh, the important parts uh, that I'll be discussing are the, in blue, the, the paracortical areas, which are mostly uh, populated with T cells, uh, the white or cream uh, areas, which are the lymphoid follicles where the B cells hang out, and then in yellow, the germinal centers where the T and B cells come together. Um, what I will uh, do is simply take one of these areas, turn it on its side, and make it much more simplified like this, where you have the, the lymphoid follicle uh, where the B cells uh, are at the top, the paracortical area where the T cells are at the bottom, uh, and then the germinal centers where both T and B cells uh, will interact. And if uh, any of you attended Jake Estes' uh, talk yesterday, you know uh, that there's actually a, a structure within the germinal center where it's broken down into a light zone where the T and B cells interact, uh, and then a dark zone where the B cells go to proliferate before they go back to the light zone and reinteract uh, with T cells. So that's where uh, the uh, main uh, interactions occur bef between T and B cells. And the T cells uh, that uh, move into that area and orchestrate uh, this interaction are called the T follicular helper cells. Uh, and uh, they uh, basically, I can't get that to work. So uh, they uh, start by interacting with dendritic cells uh, and uh, uh, upregulate CXCR5. Uh, downregulate CCR7 and upregulate BCL6. This allows them to move uh, into the germinal center uh, where they interact with germinal center B cells uh, through a number of different interactions, uh, leading to within the B cells uh, the induction of activation induced deaminase, which leads to somatic hypermutation. And this is how we get uh, the uh, uh, large amount of somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation of the antibody response. Now, one thing that's been known for many years is that HIV and SIV actually uh, attack uh, this germinal center reaction. So back in 1993, it was published uh, that most of the virus replication occurring within lymph nodes actually occurs within these germinal centers uh, so that uh, not only are we trying to induce the antibody response there, uh, but uh, that antibody response and the interactions between T and B cells is probably being affected uh, by both uh, uh, HIV and SIV infection. More recently, uh, the uh, Jeppe Pantaleo's group uh, has shown uh, that if you look uh, at HIV-infected individuals and look at their T follicular helper cells in lymph nodes defined here by expression of PD-1 and CXCR5, uh, that they, that population actually is the population uh, that contains the highest uh, copy numbers of HIV DNA. In addition, if you take within uh, long-term non-progressors and try and stimulate virus, it is the T follicular helper cells uh, that are uh, the, the major source of replication-competent uh, virus. And then more recently, in work from Lewis Picker's lab uh, and uh, uh, Jeff Lifson's lab, uh, it was shown uh, that in elite controller monkeys, uh, that uh, T follicular helper cells uh, were really restricting uh, virus replication. So we've known for many years that uh, when you infect uh, a monkey uh, with HIV or, or with SIV or when a, a human gets infected with HIV, that you get this very rapid loss uh, of about 80% of your CD4 T cells uh, within a very short period of time. So within the lymph node, where are those uh, CD4 T cells being lost? So 
This is a, a work that we did uh, looking at T cells from the T cell zone uh, or from the germinal center in either SIV uninfected monkeys in white, uh, SIV acutely infected monkeys in gray, or chronically infected monkeys in black. And what you can see is that you're losing your CD4 T cells mostly from the T cell zone. But actually, there appears to be an accumulation uh, of T follicular helper cells uh, with SIV infection. And this is not something that just occurs with SIV infection. It was shown uh, by Hendrik Streak's group uh, that the same phenomenon occurs in HIV-infected individuals where you have a rel relative accumulation of these T follicular helper cells. So what does that look like if you look by confocal microscopy? So here's a, a normal uh, 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 lymph node from uh, a monkey, uh, not SIV infected, uh, and what you can see on the left is low power, and that uh, thing that's in the, the yellow dashed box is a germinal center. It's blown up on the right. Uh, you can see the uh, light zone uh, up at the top and the dark zone at the bottom, uh, the, the light zone being marked by uh, T follicular helper cells uh, by the expression of CD4 and PD1, uh, and the KI67 marking uh, the B cells. So that's a normal looking uh, germinal center. If you look uh, in an SIV infected monkey, you see something quite different. You see these much larger and much more disorganized uh, germinal centers uh, with a lot more uh, T follicular helper cells uh, and basically a loss of, of a lot of the, the really fine uh, delineation of dark and light zones. So uh, there's a lot that's being disrupted uh, during this uh, SIV infection in the germinal center. So what does that do to the B cell response in the germinal center? Uh, well, we can identify germinal center B cells because they bind uh, peanut agglutinin. As you can see here in the peripheral blood, you don't get any peanut agglutinin binding B cells. You do get them uh, within uh, the lymph node, and those are the, the B cells in the germinal center. When you look at SIV infected monkeys uh, that uh, uh, have uh, high T follicular helper cells. Uh, they have actually a higher number of germinal center B cells that express higher levels of BCL6, and they actually express uh, higher uh, levels of GP120 specific antibody within uh, their serum. So uh, this SIV infection and the disruption of the germinal center reaction is actually leading to a, a more vigorous antibody response. But we're, what we're really interested in uh, is how is this affecting uh, the, the neutralizing uh, antibody response? And how can we uh, evaluate what's going on in the germinal center and how that relates to the development of broadly neutralizing antibodies? Since it's very difficult to take longitudinal lymph node biopsies of, of humans, uh, such as the ones that Penny Moore has been uh, studying. Uh, but we can do this uh, in the SIV or SHIV system. So several years ago, uh, Mal Martin's group uh, identified a, a SHIV, SHIV-88, where monkeys infected uh, get chronically infected with, with this uh, SHIV, and some of them go on to develop broadly neutralizing antibodies. So we simply said, can we use this model to evaluate what's happening in the germinal center and how that then affects broadly neutralizing antibodies. So we took eight monkeys, uh, we did lymph node biopsies on all of them, infected them intrarectally with uh, SHIV-88, and then did serial lymph node biopsies and collected lots of blood, et cetera. Uh, we knew from previous studies that the neutralizing antibody response would take about 40 weeks uh, to develop. So at week 44, we took serum from all eight monkeys. We tested them against a, a panel of 19 different viruses. And what you can see is that different monkeys had a different breadth of neutralization. We could come up with a neutralization score based upon how, how uh, strong the neutralization was against different isolates. And uh, throughout the talk, what I'll simply say is that we have a range of uh, neutralizing activity. Uh, and in all the graphs that I show, the, the, monk the three monkeys with the best neutralization are shown in red. The three with the uh, intermediate neutralization are in blue. And the two that had the lowest neutralization are in black. So what correlated uh, with the generation of good neutralization? And, and just as uh, 
Mark Connors had mentioned uh, when asked what correlated with the ability to generate broad neutralizing antibodies in humans, the monkeys with the highest viral load uh, were the ones that developed the best neutralization, and they also have the lowest CD4. Because we're interested in what's going on in the, the germinal center, uh, we uh, looked uh, for T follicular helper cells, uh, here uh, defined by CXCR5 and PD1 expression. And what you see is a bit of a correlation. Uh, the, the blue and red monkeys tended to have somewhat uh, better uh, uh, T follicular helper cell numbers, but it wasn't uh, as clear. So what we decided we had to do is look at uh, HIV uh, envelope or SIV specific T follicular helper cells and B uh, cells in the germinal centers to see how those correlated with neutralization. So first, uh, looking at envelope specific B cells uh, and how they correlated with the neutralization score. If we looked for envelope specific B cells in the peripheral blood, as you can see, we did not see a correlation uh, with neutralization score. However, on the bottom, if we looked at germinal center envelope specific B cells and asked did they correlate with the neutralization score, the answer was yes, extremely well. So the better the, the germinal center reaction and envelope specific B cells that were being generated there, the better the neutralization score in the serum. In terms of T follicular helper cells, uh, we looked at envelope specific T follicular helper cells in the lymph node. We identified these based upon their mobilization of CD154. You see a, a reasonable correlation, uh, but we can uh, look uh, at an, a T follicular helper cell specific cytokine that was secreted, IL4, in which case you see a very good correlation. However, there are cells that have the phenotype of a T follicular helper cells, but uh, on stimulation it express interferon gamma, which is a Th1 type of cytokine. And when you look at those in the lower right-hand corner, you see that there's no good correlation uh, with uh, uh, the neutralization score. So not all T follicular helper cells are created equally, and so it led us to do the following uh, experiment where we actually sorted 200 envelope-specific T follicular helper cells from these uh, monkeys' lymph nodes. We isolated their RNA, and we did quantitative RT-PCR for 11 different transcripts associated with different T cell functions in lymph nodes. And when we did that, uh, so these are all sorted envelope-specific T follicular helper cells, what you see is that the monkeys that had very good neutralization scores, uh, their T follicular cell helper cells had higher expression of BCL6, GATA3, CXCL13, MAF, IL-21, all of these genes that are associated with T follicular helper cells. Whereas those uh, in the middle that had weak neutralization, their T follicular helper cells expressed more Th1 type of cytokines and lower amounts of T follicular helper cell type of uh, genes. So they're not all created equally, and actually getting the right quality of T follicular helper cells is important. Uh, a lot of people have been looking at cells in the periphery that appear to be like uh, T follicular helper cells, uh, and so we decided to look in the peripheral blood of these monkeys and see if we also got uh, good correlations with neutralization scores. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all the different uh, literature, everyone uses a different panel uh, of cytokines to, or of uh, markers to define their peripheral T follicular helper cells. Uh, so what we did uh, is we chose two of them, uh, this one uh, and this one, which uh, are fairly similar, and simply applied this to our monkey studies here, looking at PD-1 positive CXCR5 positive CXCR3 negative PD-1 positive cells, uh, and we don't see a good correlation with neutralization score. Using this other uh, uh, set of markers, once again, we don't see good neutralization score. So while there are these uh, cells in the periphery which seem to have T follicular helper cell type function, they don't predict whether you're going to have good neutralization as well as do cells actually that are within the germinal center. So uh, everyone gets to show this Gumby model of the GP120 and the different uh, antibodies that bind to it. Uh, as you know, 
uh, uh, extensive somatic hypermutation uh, is associated with good neutralization. Uh, so we uh, asked whether the, the uh, monkeys that had better neutralization, whether there was more evidence of somatic hypermutation. So we sorted memory envelope-specific B cells from week 44 from the uh, bone marrow, sequenced their immunoglobulin genes, compared that to a new database, uh, and looked at the amount of somatic hypermutation. Uh, we had between 60 and 150 uh, individual clones uh, to sequence and, and do this comparison. And when you do that, what you see is that there's a very good correlation between neutralization score and average somatic hypermutation. And then finally, we wanted to know how envelope was driving this uh, reaction. Uh, so uh, with Brandon Keel, uh, we gave him uh, monkey plasma samples from multiple time points. He did dil limiting dilution, uh, single genome uh, amplification and sequencing. Here uh, is over time uh, from the, the, the envelope sequences from two monkeys that had poor neutralization, here from two monkeys that had reasonable uh, neutralization, and here from the three monkeys that had very good neutralization. Uh, and as you can see, uh, JG7, the, the monkey sort of in the middle uh, right, uh, you see the type of envelope sequence variability uh, that was actually very nicely demonstrated in Penny Moore's talk of, of CAP256. So, uh, in conclusion, and trying to keep us on time, uh, SHIV-88 infection can be used to study factors associated with the generation of broadly neutralizing antibodies. Broadly neutralizing antibodies develop slowly during chronic inf infection and are associated with high viral loads, low CD4 T cells, more and better quality of envelope-specific T follicular helper cells in the germinal centers of lymph nodes, more envelope-specific germinal center B cells, greater somatic hypermutation and evolving envelope sequence diversity, uh, much has been, uh, as has been seen uh, in uh, the studies of HIV-infected cohorts. I think these have uh, real implications for vaccine design uh, in that, as uh, other speakers have noted, antigenic changes will be required for envelope immunogens to drive the degree of somatic hypermutation required for broad neutralization. But I think these types of non-human primate studies can be used to inform the design and protective efficacy testing of different on immunogens. Uh, and with that, I would simply like to acknowledge a lot of uh, people who are involved in this, uh, specifically uh, Sarah Ferrando Martinez, Costas uh, Petrovis, and uh, Takuya Yamamoto, who did uh, most of uh, this work. Uh, obviously, the uh, animal model uh, of SHIV-88 infection uh, was developed by Yoshi Nishimura in Mal Martin's lab. This has been a longstanding collaboration for image analysis with Michael Gerner and Ron Germain, uh, and we have a lot of different people who help us by providing us with uh, lymph nodes. Thank you very much. So we have time for maybe one question. 